<clears throat> I want to think of this phrase that we've read. We have not passed this way before. We're on the verge of a new year. And tomorrow we uh, enter a, a new time. In 1855, a railway line was built between Belfast and Port Rush. But the owner of Port Stewart, the whole, that whole area was owned by a man called John Crummy. And John Crummy was what we would call a Sabbatarian. He felt that the coming of the railway would uh, disrupt uh, the morals and the church-going habit of the people in Port Stewart. So he refused it entry onto his property. But they built a, a railway uh, a station called Cremore Halt on the very edge of Crummy's property, just outside it. And that railway station is a mile from Port Stewart Prom, Port Stewart's beautiful prom. And because of this, Port Stewart developed less vigorously than surrounding seaside resorts. You see, John Crumley, in a sense, had taken his eye off the ball, his main purpose. His main purpose was to develop a family-friendly seaside resort that would um, keep its inhabitants. You know the seaside resorts, uh, they live fruitfully during the summertime with all the visitors and then whenever all the visitors go home again, winter time can be, well, more difficult, you see. But he took his eye off the ball. He kept visitors out of Port Stewart for some time. In today's passage, the children of Israel had taken their eyes off the ball. They'd taken their eyes off the Lord Jesus. They listened to the evil one. They believed. Remember the story of the 12 spies? They believed the 10 lying spies and didn't listen to the two truthful spies. They took their eye off the Lord. And because of their flagrant disobedience, only two adults, only two adults from that generation made it into the promised land that at this time in our passage that they're just about to enter into. In our passage today, the Israelites are at a new beginning in their life. They are at a place you have not passed this way before. It's all new to them. And we are at a new place today. We are at the last day of the year. We're on the threshold of a new year. 2024. You see, we have not passed this way before. Now, first of all, let's notice we're to follow the Lord. In verse 3, as soon as you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God being carried by the Levitical priests, then you shall set out from your place and follow it. You see, the Ark of the Covenant was very, very important in the life of the children of Israel. The Ark of the Covenant was the presence of God with his people. When the Ark of the Covenant was there, they knew their God was with them. Moses was instructed by God to build the Ark, to build this uh, this rectangular box made of acacia wood and it was covered, uh, overlaid with gold inside and out and it had a cover on it made of pure gold and then we called that the mercy seat and on the mercy seat uh, there were uh, two cherubim and their wings covered over the seat of the Ark of the Covenant. And this expressed the people's longing to be safe in the presence 
of God. The Ark of the Covenant had three special important contents. First of all, it had the Ten Commandments, the law, which the finger of God had written himself. There was also a jar of manna, and this witnessed God's gracious provision for the children of Israel over the 40 years that they traveled uh, in the desert. And the third thing was Aaron's budded rod, and this symbolized God's authority and power. Now, contrary to the Indiana Jones movies, the Ark of the Covenant was not found in 1936. Nonsense. After the overthrow of Jerusalem in 587 by King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, Solomon's temple, which contained the Ark of the Covenant, was destroyed. And scripture does not mention again the Ark of the Covenant in all of scripture. It was lost. We don't know how. We don't know anything other than about it that is not mentioned again. The children of Israel had just completed their 40 years wandering in the desert. And here they are at a new beginning. They're about to enter the promised land, a place where they have not passed this way before. They were a completely new generation other than um, Joshua and Caleb. A completely new generation. And they had to cross over the flooded Jordan into the promised land. The people had their instructions to follow by faith the Ark of the Covenant. Verse 3, as soon as you see the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord your God being carried by the Levitical priests, then you shall set out from the place and follow it. We've been celebrating the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ this past week or so. Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus, when he came, is God with us. The Ark of the Covenant was the physical presence of God with his people. So Jesus is the Ark of the Covenant. He is Emmanuel, God with us. The Lord Jesus Christ is the divine presence of God with his people. Emmanuel, God with us. We're called to follow the Ark of the Covenant, the Lord Jesus Christ. Everything in the Ark of the Covenant pointed to the Lord Jesus. We've noticed it contained Ten Commandments, Jar of Manna, and Aaron's Budded um, Rod. Jesus fulfilled the law. We read Matthew uh, 5 and 17. He came not to abolish them, but to fulfill them. Jesus is the fulfillment of the law. Jesus is the manna, the bread of God. He said himself, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry again. And Aaron's buttered rod was a symbol of God's power and authority among his people, which Jesus displayed while he was on earth. Matthew 7, 28. The crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he was teaching them as one who had authority and not as their scribes. So, on the threshold of a new year, we have never been here before. Tomorrow is a new year. It's a new beginning. Uh, I, don't, I don't make New Year's uh, uh, covenants. I, 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 I tend not to do it because as sure as shooting on the second day, you've forgotten all about <laughs> your promises for the year. So I don't. But I know lots of folks do. Uh, tonight, they'll, they'll make precious promises. And whether you keep them or not, uh, like I say, I, I tend not to. So we're at the threshold of a new year. We're uh, commanded in Hebrews 12 and 2, fixing your eyes upon Jesus, 
the author and perfecter of faith. You see, Jesus came that we would follow him. And we, how do we know what to follow? It's here in this book. You've got a copy of this book, yes? And if you're, I'm sure you're using a modern translation. They are all good translations. Don't listen to people that run down your version of the Bible. You read it and believe what it says because this is truth. What you read in this book is truth. As we face the challenges of 2024, and there will be challenges, there will be. Maybe you know some of them. Some of the challenges that are at 24 for us, we already know what some of them are. You see, we have not passed this way before. It made me think of the little song, Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will go strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. We're meant to follow Jesus. Secondly, God will guide us. We're not alone. We may feel lonely at times, but we're not alone. Verse 4, yet there shall be a distance between you and it, that's the Ark of the Covenant, about 2,000 cubits in length. Do not come near it in order that you may know the way you shall go. It happens so often in life that we can't see the wood for the trees. In life sometimes we get too close to something that we miss the big picture. We can just see something in the periphery and we become concentrated on one thing rather than stepping back and seeing the big picture. You see, the Christian, and I want you to understand what I'm saying here, that the Christian faith is bigger than Bible versions, eschatology, the Lord's table, baptism. I could go on. Now these, in a sense, are periphery issues. They're vital in our life as Christians. We must obey them. But at the end of the day, they are periphery issues, and we concentrate. I remember a fellow I used to hear preaching occasionally. And all he preached on ever was prophecy. That's all he preached on. He didn't preach a straight gospel message or a straight teaching message. It was always, he took a prophecy and he'd work through it. So he was in, in light in a periphery issue. He concentrated on that and rather than stepping back and looking at the big picture. What is the big picture? The work and person of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is what we're called to preach and to teach. Matthew 28 and 19, the Lord Jesus himself said, Go you into all the world, baptizing and teaching. What do we teach? The truth. We teach what's in this. That is the big picture. Rather than getting bogged down on periphery issues. The children of Israel were told not to get too close, to stand back, so that whenever they stood back, they could see where they were going. If they had went up close to the Ark of the Covenant, the two million or so Israelites wouldn't have seen it. They couldn't see where they were going. So they were ordered to stand back and see the big picture, see where they were being guided to go. Verse 4. You shall be at a distance between you and it, the Ark of the Covenant, about 2,000 cubits in length. Do not come near it, in order that you may know the way you shall go. Above all things, we must be able to see the Lord Jesus. As we read about him here, it's all here. This is the end. This is what it's all about, what you read in the Bible. Not what I'm telling you. If I tell you something and you think to yourself, 
I'm not too sure about that. Fair enough. Go to the Bible and confirm it or uh, neglect it as you read in here. That is truth. He will lead us in the way we should go. For example, he said, uh, John 10 and verse 3, The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. We must see the Lord Jesus. Why? Because he will lead us to where he wants us to be. God commands us, Proverbs 3 and 5, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, all your ways acknowledge him and he will make your paths straight. We must stand back, see the big picture. What is the big picture? The person and work of the Lord Jesus Christ as we find it in his holy word. Keep our eyes upon Jesus. Look full in his wonderful face. That's the answer. Remember Peter. Always love that. I, I preached in this uh, probably last year. Remember Peter. He was amazing. He was in the boat. Do you remember during the storm? He was in the boat. And Jesus commanded him to come to him. Do you remember? Jesus commanded him, uh, Matthew, 14, Matthew 14, 28. Come. Jesus said. So Peter got out of the boat and walked on the water and came to Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Jesus immediately reached out his hand and took hold of him, saying, Oh, ye of little faith, why did you doubt? You see, Peter took his eyes off the Lord Jesus and he saw the wind and he saw the waves. He wasn't looking at Jesus. He was looking at what was around him. He took his eyes, he saw the wind and he was afraid and he began to sink. We need to keep our eyes upon the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the big picture. As we enter a new year, a place where we haven't been before, we must keep our eye upon Jesus in order that you may know the way that you shall go. Follow the Lord. God will guide you. And finally, everything is new to us. You have not passed this way before. I'm sure you'll agree with me that we have not passed this way before. Look at the news this past, well, months. It's hard to understand, isn't it? We're living in a different society that we were born uh, into. I often wonder, well, my old man, my dad's dead, oh, I don't know, over 30 years now. If he was to come back now, <laughs> he wouldn't recognise the world that we're, he wouldn't recognise the world that we're living in. Men participate in women's sports. Men are put into women's jails. Abortion. Did you read that in 20, uh, 2022, Scotland saw uh, six and a half thousand abortions in one year. That was a 20% rise from the previous year. A 20% rise in abortion in one year. Primary school children are encouraged this whole gender debate. And it's no wonder that our children now are having severe mental problems. The society we lived in is a new place for us. We just don't understand. I mean, the next thing that's coming very, very close now is assisted suicide. It's going to come. Flies fully in the face of God's holy word. Life has to do with the Lord. The Lord will give us life and the Lord will take it when our time has come. It's the Lord's decision, not our decision. And how dare our governments encourage people to consider taking their own life. It's unbiblical. It's not Christian. It's obvious that we can no longer rely 
on the life that we've led up to now. Our experiences are totally different. Now, it's different for me. I'm an old man now. I'm, uh, I'm 77 in, uh, what, four days, five days' time? I'll be 77. So, could you think back over 70 years? I know most of you can't, but <laughs> whenever I look back over 70 years, the changes. I live in a different world now than I was born into. It's different. You see, we haven't passed this way before. It's all new. 2024 is going to be all new for all of us. And it's obvious that we can't rely on our past experiences because we have not passed this way before. Just like God told the prophet Isaiah, Isaiah 30, 21, your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right hand or whenever you turn to the left hand. So what the Spirit is saying, you shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way. You see, whenever you turn to the left, you're going along and you've got a, a decision to make. You turn to the left, or you turn away to the right, then the Spirit, your ears shall hear a word behind you saying, this is the way, walk in it. We live in a world that our grandparents, and certainly my old man, wouldn't recognize and certainly wouldn't be comfortable with in these days. Paul deals with these empty ideas. I hesitate to use the word woke, because I'm not awfully sure what it means. I understand the outcoming of this word, but it's just emptiness, shallow thinking. And Paul makes it clear in Colossians 2 and 8, see to it that no one takes you captive by philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the world, not according to Christ. See, the way of the world can sound okay to a lot of people. To a lot of people it makes sense. Whenever you're trusting in the Lord Jesus Christ alone for your salvation, it's all nonsense. It's empty and shallow. So as we embark into a, a brand new year, 2024, we know that Jesus is in control of everything. Deuteronomy 31 and 8, the Lord who goes before you, he will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. He, uh, do not be afraid or be dismayed. Whenever I was uh, writing these words, making notes, uh, an old chorus came to me. I wonder if you know it. God only rivers you think uncrossable. God only mountains you can't tunnel through. God specializes in things thought impossible. He does the things others cannot do. An old chorus. Follow the Lord. God will guide you. And finally, everything is new to us. In 1939, beginning of the Second World War, UK, uh, UK was in a place that they had not been this way before. Second World War was underway. Christmas Day, 1939, King George VI addressed the nation. And he quoted the words of an obscure uh, Canadian poet, Minnie Louise Haskins. And he quoted these words. And I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, Give me a light that I might tread safely into the unknown. He replied, Go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. Then shall be to you better than light and safer than a known way. So as we enter a new year, a place that we haven't been before, the answer is, the big picture, the Lord Jesus Christ. He alone is the answer. He alone 
is the one who came to lead you in the way that you should go. So we're going to